so jumping in to the next game, probably the biggest game of the week, which me and John are very, very shocked by, but really shouldn't be shocked about because the NFL does this a, a lot where they just miss the boat. The game of the year for a lot of people last year, maybe the greatest game some people say that they've ever seen last year in the playoffs, the AFC, the uh, rematch of the AFC divisional uh, matchup last year, the Kansas City Chiefs are taking on the Buffalo Bills in Kansas City. But Buffalo is favored by two and a half. Now, John, I don't know if you knew this, but this is the first time in Patrick Mahomes' career that he is the underdog, the betting underdog at home. First time ever. Interesting. Now, I will tell you a little uh, facts about this game, John, and then I'll kick it to you. Tredavious White, let's just, he's not he, he's off PUP, but he's not playing this week. Sean McDermott already said that. He's not coming back this week. But Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, their head-to-head record, Mahomes leads it 3-1. to one. That's almost like Brady versus Manning, but not quite. Brady started 6-0 against Peyton Manning. So, John, I'm going to kick it to you. Tell me your thoughts about this game. Mahomes, first-time underdog in his career at home. What do you think? First off, I'm looking at the Chiefs and the Bills. Those are probably the two toughest places to play right now in the NFL. Would you disagree on that? I don't know if there's any place I'd rather not play at than Arrowhead. Uh, Yeah, I've heard from a lot of former players that Arrowhead is probably the loudest Stadium, which is crazy because it's an outdoor stadium. But, you know, obviously you got your Seattle with the 12th man and whatnot. But Philadelphia is a tough place to play. But, yeah, these are the, – the Bills fans travel very well. And the Kansas City fans, they are they are raucous. And the Kansas City fans, it's really like a college stadium. It's like yeah. it's a Saturday game day, which is ridiculous. But when you're this darn good and you got to maximize that window – so in terms of injuries, Jordan Poirier is working his way back. The Bills still are banged up in the back end because Micah Hyde is out for the season. And like you said, Tredavious White can't come back until week eight. So those are two key pieces. That being said, they didn't have much trouble last week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. That secondary looked very good for the first half of the game when they're actually playing. This Bills offense is just too explosive. I have them come in arrowhead. And this, for some reason, this isn't a primetime game, which is an absolute indictment. And at 425, giving this Chiefs defense fits, Stefan Diggs, Gabe Davis, Khalil Shakur, Quentin Morris came out last week and had a very good game without Dawson Knox. And Josh Allen, Brandon, I have never seen a quarterback like him in all my years watching football. He's going to come into Arrowhead, throw for 350-plus passing yards, three touchdowns, one rushing, and most of all, these Bills are getting a W. W. And they're going to start off the season at the top of the power rankings. The ultimate question is, when they face again the playoffs, who's going to win that? Now let's introduce to you guys Betstamp. Now Betstamp is a all-in-one marketplace because every sports book has different odds. On FanDuel, they got Detroit Lions at plus 194. Oh, those are good odds. You know, I'm getting an underdog at a good price, but wait. Sugar House has them at plus 215. Get a little bit more bang for your buck, and that's what it's all about when you're betting. You can track all your bets through all the sports books, and I'll have that right there in one convenient place for you to look. And our referral code is WISEGUYS, W-I-S-E-G-U-Y-S. That's wise guys. And like I was saying, the biggest thing with BetStamp, guys, it's free. Let me, let me uh, give you a little insight to this game, right? The Buffalo Bills have the number one offense in the league. They're number one in passing. They're 14th in rushing. They also have the number two defense in the league. Number four against the pass, and number two against the run. They're plus two in turnover differential. That's tied for fourth. Um, Kansas City's offense is ranked sixth overall. They're fourth in passing, 24th in, uh, or sorry, 18th in the run. Their defense is number 14 overall. They are 24th against the pass, but they are third, number three against the run. Now they have allowed um, their number, they're, they're 24th in the league in points allowed. 
of Buffalo and Kansas City. This is a game that's going to be very interesting because Buffalo and Kansas City. Kansas City is ranked number one. Buffalo is ranked number two in scoring offenses going into this game. I true I, I, I um oh and I should say Buffalo's defense is tied for number one in the NFL in points allowed. They average they allow twelve point two ga- uh, points per game tied with uh, San Francisco. Now to read you off a stat about Mahomes, Mahomes versus number one scoring defenses, John, is six and one. We just saw him against the number one scoring defense actually two weeks ago because entering week four, the Buccaneers were the number one scoring defense, and we saw what happened. In in those games, the Chiefs offense, <clears throat> excuse me, averaged 31 points per game. Mahomes averages 322.4 passing yards per game. He's got a 15 to 7 touchdown interception ratio and a 94.3 passer rating. I think this is going to be a very close game. Um, and when you bring up the playoff game and you bring up Stefan Diggs coming off a big game, well, Stefan Diggs is going to have to um, do a lot better than what he did last time that these two teams face because I'm looking at his stats mm-hmm. right now. Does he? He's target. Huh? I don't think he has to. All right, if if you think okay, but I, I will just say he had six targets, three catches, and seven yards last year. All right, uh, actually in the playoffs he didn't really perform well. He had six receptions for sixty-seven yards and no touchdowns in the playoffs last year. I think this is going to be a close game, and we all know how I feel, and we all know the history of Pat of not Pat, uh, Josh Allen in close games, right? In one-score games, Josh Allen is now one in seven. Whip de doo, he won one game against the Baltimore Ravens this year. I if you're a Josh Allen fan, I would not use that as a argument to say he can do it now because you're still spewing off a one and seven. Congratulations, you won one. You still lost seven other. And I won't get into the games, those games yet. Maybe I'll save that for another time when Justin's here, because I know he specifically asked. Uh, for those games, and I have the games in front of me, and I have some Josh Allen stats and stuff that he did wrong, but I'm going to wait for Justin to uh, be back on the show to read those off. I'm I'm going to take Patrick Mahomes. I don't think the Bills' Ws have really been against good competition, minus the Rams opening kickoff. And again, I always say week one is the biggest wild card of the year, and we see how the Rams' offensive line has just been completely garbage for the whole year uh minus against bad competition they've been solid but beating the Steelers congratulations beating the Titans okay and then beating uh the Ravens Josh Allen didn't really look that impressive in that game it wasn't a very impressive win uh yeah I I think the Chiefs have beat I mean they beat the LA Chargers I know uh Herbert got injured that game But J.C. Jackson was coming back that game. I think Bosa was healthy, if I'm not mistaken, still. Uh, Keenan Allen was out, but Mike Williams balled out. A lot of people picked the Chargers to win that game. They've beaten the Bucs, who are my Super Bowl prediction uh, team this year. And they beat the Raiders, who are possibly the best 1-4 and team of all time. Possibly. Um, Yeah, I, I... I'm going to take Mahomes. He's 3-1 and against Allen. So give me Mahomes in Kansas City. Look at his numbers against number one scoring defenses. It's a close game. I think the Bills are going to fumble the bag like they usually do. You're making me sick with this. Yes, the Bills beat the Raven. uh, The Bills beat the Rams, the Steelers, and the Titans. You want to know what the margin was in those three games total? 85 points. So on average, they beat those three teams by nearly 30. Mm -hmm. How is that not impressive to beat the defending Super Bowl champs by 
21 in their home state. Well, if I'm not mistaken, John, before the season, you said the Rams aren't even going to win a playoff game this year. Yeah. After week one, you said they're done. And then you do that two more times. When you look at this matchup, it's Steelers and the Titans. Oh, no, but you said the defending Super Bowl champions. The Steelers, again, well, then not you, that impressive. You wash Tennessee consider, by 34. And you consider Tennessee, we all agreed. I think you were the only one that was a little bit hesitant, not predicting the downfall of the Titans. I'm not high on the Titans this year. I've never really been high on Ryan Tannehill. Again, not super impressive of a win for me. They're playing winning football with Titans. I thought the year was over until they got obliterated. By the I Bears. never, I never said they're not playing winning football. They're winning games, but the wins are not impressive to me. They really aren't. Uh, now, if you beat Kansas City in a in a in a close game, that will be impressive. But I don't think that's going to happen because again, you bring up the blowouts. Okay, that's fine. Not every game is going to be a blowout. Not every game in the playoffs is going to be like you like to bring up the Patriots versus the Bills game where you're playing a rookie quarterback. Okay. You're going to be playing a Kansas City, a Baltimore, maybe Cincinnati. Chargers could be in there. That says a lot about how explosive this team is. Gabe Davis, 28 yards per reception this year, leads the NFL. They don't need Diggs to have two touchdowns, though. He's playing right now at the level of the top five guy. There's so much versatility in this offense. When we talk about the two best quarterbacks in football, the two best offenses currently, two top five head coaches, an elite defense in Buffalo and a good one in Kansas City. These right now are the two best teams in the NFL. Is this an elite defense, though? At full capacity, yes. They're playing with the misfit secondary, and it's been elite. It's been top five this year, so that's pretty crazy. Mm. Missing an all-pro and Trey White. I have question marks. I have question marks about their defense, if I'm going to be honest. I think last year... They were a high-ranked rushing uh, defense, and then when they played really good running uh, offenses, they got worked. Um, you can look that up. That's a fact. But I have question marks about this defense. I really do. When it's when there is an, another elite team on there going up against them, I have question marks. And and honestly, I have question marks against any number one offensive team versus an. Uh, well, the the Chiefs aren't a number one offensive team, but they're a high-rated offensive team. Is what I'm trying to say against a high-ranking defense. To me, especially in the league we are now, the offense is always going to have the leg up on the defense. They just are. Uh, the defense, when the game starts, they're already playing with a leg behind. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I'm going to take Kansas City in that game. Uh, I think it's going to be a close game. I could see it being 38-35, something like that. If you want to give a final score, then we'll move on to Sunday night football. 35-28. 35-28. No field goals, man. And no we'll, we'll see if Harrison Bucker plays in this game. The Chiefs have sorely missed him through the first five weeks. He is questionable. So. 